Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about how they clear the fault. What are the mechanisms that is involved in clearing faults, okay? So we'll jump straight into it. Here we have a fault. It says here there's a three-phase fault around the fault current is about 8,000 amps. And it's at this point. So we assume that the fault is going to the ground. Is it a ground fault, a fault? So how they clear this? You know the breaker, okay. Misconception is people say, okay, the breaker open. The breaker open, okay. Breaker open means like this. Close is um, like this, for those who don't know, do not know. This is close, this is open. But a breaker doesn't have a brain. The breaker just doesn't open on its own. You need something to tell him to open. So all in all, there are like, I would say, three different components. A circuit breaker. A voltage transformer or a current transformer. And also relays. Okay, what do they play? Okay, this is a 51. This is a relay. And this is a current transformer. It measures 500 amperes. It reflects into 5 amperes in here because there is no logic to, re to measure amperes which is like 1,000, 1,000 above. You just break your ammeter. There is no ammeter that can measure currents that like that high, okay? It's just gonna fry your ammeter. Ammeter reads current in low, low current level. Maybe 10 amps, 20 amps, that's all. That's the maximum it goes. It doesn't, I may be wrong, but it may go higher, but there is no logical reason to build a crazy mac, a crazy ammeter that can measure that high. Okay, so these three components are highlighted. What happens right now? When a fault occurs, when a fault occurs, your current transformer will read it. So 8,000 here, reflects 500 ampere into 5 ampere. So what happens here is about 100 to 1. So here, it will read 80 ampere, so I would say, if my math is correct, which tends to sometimes is wrong, but today I think it's correct. So yeah, you get 80 amperes on the reading, so that's high. So, but the current transformer is only reading. It's like your eyes, your eyes and your ears. It only reads, it doesn't know what's happening. Okay, this will send a signal. Now this, the reading will be passed on to this. It's called a relay. A relay, I think 51 is what I call overcurrent relay. A relay would um, read, get the reading. So here, we, it doesn't ampere for current, reflected, da 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 da. You read the ATM. So a relay is like a brain. It's like the brain. If you are current voltage transformer, are you like your eyes and ears? Your relay is your brain. It makes the decision. So it reads 80, 80 amperes. Is it above the level it needs to be? If it's above, then okay, activate. You send a signal. You send a signal. Kaboom! Activate the breaker. So this breaker would open. And this would isolate the fault. So all this line is what you call this line break it onwards, you call it dead. Dead line. That means it's not energized. This is still energized. Everything here still energized. But over on this side, on the right side, it's all dead line. Everything is not energized anymore. So what happens is the sequence here. Circuit breaker, uh, uh, circuit uh, current transformer and voltage transformer will get a reading. They your eyes, they will see what current is happening. They pass a message to the relay. The relay will make a decision. Do we activate? Do we wait a while only activate? Like, is there a time delay? Or it needs to exceed certain amount of amperes for a certain amount of time. So let's say it must, over, it must be over current for more than five seconds, then it only activates or something like that. When it activates, you cannot activate the zone because it's a merely a brain. It passes a signal to the circuit breaker. Circuit breaker executes the thing. 
So circuit breakers, like uh, your your hands and your legs, it just it activates, it moves, and it makes a, it does the action. Your brain tells it to do the action, so that does the action. So you need three components, okay? So when a fault happens, you can say, oh, the breaker opens. No, 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 no. You must say, in your exam, you must say that the circuit, uh, the current transformer, voltage transformer, picks up the reading, gives a reading to the relay. The relay takes the input reading and makes a decision based on the relay logic and based on the time delay. Does it activate? How long do I wait to activate? And if it activates, the relay doesn't activate on its own. It sends a signal to trigger the circuit breaker to activate. Then the circuit breaker activates and boom, you clear the fault. Similar case to this. On this side, you have two. On this side, you have two. This is a bus bar. Normally, breakers are located before and after the bus bars. These are normally how design happens. In this way, you see that it's only isolated on one side because we assume that over here there's nothing else and everything's dead. The generator is on one side. In this case, the generator is on two sides. So, you want to isolate this fault. Usually, as you can see, if you only open one breaker, breaker, you open this breaker, yup, it opens, the current here is energizing here only, and anti this part, this is open, that means there's no current, there's no, it's not energization, there's no current there, and therefore it will be dead. You assume that this is dead bus. Dead. But there's also another side coming in from here. The chair, there's also another supply. This supply comes in and feeds the fault and might also energize this part as well. A little bit energization, a little bit, but most of the current will go here. You still feed the fault. The fault is still a threat. The fault is still a threat. And you haven't cleared the fault yet because you need to open one side. You have to open this side as well. So how will you do this? Usually you have another set of relays on its own. A CTVT reading and a relay. You know, it should be a complete set. Both sides should have their own. And this would operate to cater for this. But for coordination purposes, Usually, these are paired up. Let me change the color. Green. These are usually paired up. So that if one activates, both will get triggered. When both will get triggered, both will get triggered. Oh my god. You trigger both the breakers and therefore you isolate the fault completely. So this is a become a dead bus. You'll be de-energized. And your energization is only until only until this points. The loads here, the loads here. And the generator are no longer connected to this generator. This generator is not connected. Not on this line. Your feed is you supply this own uh, load, supply this own load. And this would be a isolated line. And so this is the case where there's uh, generators and on both sides because usually the system, if it's an important line, you'll be feeding, your line will not only be that simple, like just one direction generator, one direction. Here we have two directions, two directions. And usually this is normally the case. Sometimes maybe even three directions, maybe not. But line only two points, yeah, like two points. So two directions at the maximum, what I'm talking about. Yeah, two directions. So yeah, that's why you call coordination tripping.